Okay, so this is the beginning of part eight of the uh, intake build, uh, the carbon fiber intake build. What I have done is added uh, two more layers to the nozzle of, of this intake. Now, I, I still, still trying to contemplate how I'm gonna build up two rib sections. What my thought was, Maybe that I would get a couple of like four inch O-rings that would sit around this thing and I could uh, um, y use them. What I would do is like wax and um, mold release over the top of them, but I'm not sure, not sure how well they're gonna transfer through the layers of carbon fiber. I mean, do I have to kind of exaggerate those things to get the bump outs on the outside of the carbon fiber? Um, that I'm not sure of. So, uh, but anyways, I've added these things on and I will keep thinking about how I'm gonna um, provide clamping uh, restraints for um, the uh, silicone boot. But anyways, I'll bring you back. I got you back over here to where I'm making the mold for the carbon fiber intake for the A3 Cummins uh, for the haul truck. And as you can see from the last video, I have uh, put a little body filler on there to uh, shape out better that nozzle um, intake where the four inch um, tube will attach to it. Now, I, I'm still debating on what to do about making ridges in it so that when um, um, the tube goes over it, I, I can clamp it down and be assured that the clamp will hold uh, that tube in between the two ridges so that, that the tube under pressure doesn't slide one way or the other. But it kind of, that's not the only reason I brought you over here. I, I've kind of, um, kind of been thinking of some, um, you know, I made that last uh, update on it, seven, and I posted it and it got some uh, very re good responses in the comments. Um, Two people commented and, and made some valid points. Um, okay, let me throw this clip in here. Um, there was two comments made on that last video, um, and they both pertain to uh, maybe lobbing off the uh, plenum, air plenum on this head and, and building an air plenum with runners going into it. Uh, the comments were made by Brian Blocker, BC Block 02, and Biggin 44. Um, if you are at all interested in anything like this, because my uh, understanding of um, the runner length on um, intake manifolds, I thought pertained to normally aspirated like gas engines. Um, I didn't realize the runner length in um, diesel engines where you have direct injection and a turbocharger would would make the difference that that it apparently does. Um, so if you guys are all interested in that, um, in a bit here, I'm gonna leave a link to the um, uh, video and go check out those comments and then if you want to uh, look up the runner length on uh, um, engines and how they pertain to um, performance and torque but back to the original clip um, ab about the intake well, uh, about the project in, in general, so some of the comments were, um, uh, Brian said, why don't you just uh, lob that uh, runner off of the head and, and run, um, 
yeah, let me rephrase that. Lob that air t- intake off of the head and put in runners and a uh, intake on it. Um, and the discussion kind of centered around um, the length of runners in between the uh, plenum that what I would build and the uh, uh, ports on the head for uh, the intakes. Um, but le- let me change that subject. I, I'm not going to do it, but I have done that. And after I'm done with this clip, I'll show you what I did. But my discussion in, in Chapter 7 was if I was building this for a competition type of engine and not lobbing that air intake off of the head and, and building other things, I probably would have sloped this down at a better angle so that it kind of forced or created a pathway better for the air to go into those buried ports. On the A3, it's one and two, and it's somewhat on six. Uh, Not as bad as one and two are, but six is buried also. So I had talked about that. I'm kind of, I have some extra material left over, some of that foam, and I'm thinking about making two of these things. Um, As long as I'm doing it and gonna be in the process of doing that, maybe I should just get some more material and make another one where the pitch on this runner is is more inducive of forcing air into those pockets that are created by the plenum on the head. Um, so it, it's just a thought, but uh, I, I kind of wanted to bring you over here, show you uh, what had been done. Again, I, I'm still, I'm not gonna say baffled, but I, I'm still up in the air about how I'm gonna create those ridges to, to hold that um, the, the um, tube on there good. Um, so, but I'll give it more thought and let you know what I come up with. But maybe I'll take you over and show you. Now, it wasn't an 8.3 where I lobbed that um, air plenum off of the head. It was actually an old head for a 5.9 Cummins, but I'll take it over and show it to you. I gotta dig it out. So I pulled it out and threw it up on the bench for you to see. So here is the intake ports for this 5.9. And what there was is an air plenum that came off of it off the side, just like um, on the kind of on the 8.3, except smaller. Um, So what I did is I lobbed it off on the mill. I'll take you back over to the 8.3 and show you what I'm talking about, the air plenum that comes off of the side. Um, but before I do that, I'll, uh, uh, I also made the uh, runner. Now, what the big, one of the issues is, is after you lob this thing off, is you, you're kind of limited to where you can drill and tap attachment points in this thing so that you don't drill into a water jacket um, on the head. So you're once you lob this thing off, you're kind of limited um, as to where you can drill and tap the thing to hold it in place. But this was just an experimental thing just to see if I could do it what was involved with it. One of the things that you would have to do is, I I don't know whether it'll show up on camera, but what I would have to do is take like a fly cutter and cut this back a little further so that I could stop that possible passage of air in between 
like one and two or any place where there is so that this plate would uh, go back uh, closer to it or actually I'm not even sure if I would be able to get a fly cutter in there to um, get it off but you could probably get a gasket in there to stop air seepage in between cylinders on it but anyways yeah uh, there, there that is uh, I don't even remember now the, again this head wasn't any good to begin with it was just an experimental thing um, I actually um, used it to experiment on um, putting bigger valves into the 5.9 so um, I bored out one of the valve ports or maybe even a couple of them uh, I'll, let me flip it over and I'll show that to you too so um, here is where I uh, bored out the valve ports on this thing uh, again it was just experimental type of thing to see um, what could be done again when you do this you have to be ex uh, extremely careful not that you to get into a water jacket or not to make that area between a water jacket and the valve port so um, small that there's a potential for it to crack or blow out so again it, it was just an experimental type of thing the head wasn't any good to begin with so back over to the A3 head and this is the air plenum that I milled off so you just mill it off um, right down through this is what I used to do it with <clears throat> I just put it on uh, the mill. I don't even remember which mill it was. I think it was this K&T mill. I did it on. Just milled it off and then what you would do afterwards is use a fly cutter or something like that to, to um, I was just looking at it. Um, see these soft plugs. I don't think these soft plugs were in the um, uh, five nine. It might be a little harder to do this one because you would uh, you'd be cutting through that area of that soft plug. Now whether that soft plug is just in the air plenum itself or whether that soft plug is a water jacket plug um, I'm, not, I'm not really sure but um, basically just so that you know I did do it on a 5.9 and uh, that's how I did it was just cut it off with that okay just a, a quick uh, insert here to explain a couple of things um, when I talked about making that uh, second one it, it would be just for um, information uh, I, I would make it so that maybe it could be tested to see what I would do is uh, prob if I made it I would probably add another py uh, pyrometer to um, maybe one or two cylinders and six cylinders and see the exhaust gas temperature difference between or if it did make an, a difference in exhaust gas temperature between this one and the one that has what I would think is a more smoother linear uh, flow force flow back into one and two and six um, but so to do that I uh, would need a dyno now I have a friend that has a dyno um, but his is a rear-wheel drive uh, dyno measures uh, torque and horsepower 
And this thing and the engine build is going to be done long before the truck that it's going into, so it would take time. Um, but if Brian, if you're listening, if you had your dyno up and running, uh, maybe a, I would uh, bring it down and the engine down there and uh, test the intake manifolds out on that and see if uh, what the difference is. If it does make a difference in power, but uh, whether basically it makes a difference in exhaust exhaust gas temperatures on on those cylinders, which uh, kind of saves the engine. Um, well, the wear on the engine on those cylinders. Let's not say saves the engine. Um, but the other thing is the uh, air plenum, uh, cutting that air plenum off. That, that's strictly for. Um, r racing pulling type engines you'd never I wouldn't do it on a um, working truck to uh, cut that plenum off and um, use uh, runners on it off of a uh, custom built intake manifold but I just thought I'd, I'd share that with you and um, I'll see where it goes uh, did I mention I ordered a couple of uh, O-rings for this uh, four-inch O-rings? They didn't have Napa didn't have any of them in stock. I ordered a couple of them. We'll see if that works. What I was thinking also is if it doesn't, if I don't think that I'm going to be able to get enough buildup where it's going to transfer those those ridges through the layers of carbon fiber. I could probably use a piece of wire, like a, get a solid core, um, maybe 10 or 8 gauge wire, um, electrical wire, and, and make, make them out of that. But um, I'll let you know about that too. Okay, I'm back over here to the table, and what I did is, as you can probably see, I started cutting some of these pieces of foam out to make that second one. Um, probably a good thing that I'm making the second one anyways, in case something goes wrong with the first one, um, I've got the material there to uh, improve upon the second one. Um, so one of the things that I'm unsure of, and Again, you know, you search the internet or Google stuff, and um, you you can get as much disinformation as you can get information off of the internet. So you've got to cipher through and try and figure out what what is reality, what isn't reality, what's good information, what's bad information. Most of the, my knowledge about this fabric and the resins is coming from people that supply it. Uh, in other words, manufacturers or suppliers of, the, of this stuff. That's what they do, they market this stuff. One of the things that they're saying um, on a couple of different sites is in order to, as you know, I'm going to produce that flange, it's going to be oversized, so I've got to cut it down and um, drill the holes that for the um, intake plenum on the head. Drill the holes to bolt it down to the intake plenum on the head. One of the things that they are saying is you need special tools to cut and um, drill carbon fiber and Kevlar. Um, there's is one site actually says you need the, the special tools more for carbon fiber than you do for Kevlar. <clears throat> I, I'm not really sure if that's true. I mean, I have a, what they're saying for cutting, and I'm not talking about the bare cloth before you uh, impregnate it with resin. What I'm talking about is cutting it afterwards. What they are saying is that uh, to cut it afterwards, you need um, 
a, a diamond impregnator wheel. I think I have a diamond impregnator wheel, so that's not an issue with that. The issue is, do you actually need special drill bits to um, drill this? Uh, they're saying that you hit your, they have a special drill bit, or you can also use a pure carbon um, drill bit to do it. Um, I, I'm, yeah, I'm not sure. It, it almost kind of sounds fishy to me. And again, why it even sounds more fishy to me is because the people that are selling this stuff are giving you that information. You know, are they just saying that? They're saying, you know, will it work with other drill bits? And they're just saying that so that you'll buy their special drill bits or their special cutting wheels with diamond impregnated uh, material in them not really sure if any of you guys have ever worked with carbon fiber before and cut or drilled it after it's been laid up um, let me know whether what i found out is the gospel or if it's uh just a, a company trying to make some more money off of selling other things that aren't really needed. But anyways, that's going to do it for uh, this uh, build update. Um, I'll bring you back next time.